you couldn't really make up for the slow shooting with good aim. It was a monster in hardcore, but I mean, so is every other gun, so I'm not really going to give it a pass there. In core, it would kill in three to four shots, and when you're only firing at 483 rounds per minute and everybody has jetpacks, those are not the stats that you want. First off, I want to say thank you to everybody for all the love on the worst kill streak in every single Call of Duty video. You guys absolutely crushed it. It has almost a hundred and fifty thousand views. What is up, everybody? Chaos here. Welcome to the channel. Do me a favor. Turn on those notifications if you subscribe. Make sure you check that box that says receive all notifications. We are trying to get that notification squad percentage up in 2020. Today, we are going to continue with that series. This is a series where we go through every single Call of Duty defining the best, the worst out of it. Assault rifles, well, I think it's safe to say they're a huge part of Call of Duty. I'm willing to say that 90% of kills that happen in every COD game are either an assault rifle or an SMG. Now, everybody has their own favorite AR from COD history. Maybe it's the M16, maybe it's the ACR, maybe the AK, but not all ARs are created equal, my friends. So today, we are going to take a journey through COD history, starting with COD 4 all the way up to Modern Warfare 2019, and we are going to pick the worst assault rifle in every single one of them. Now, you let me know in the comments which picks you agree with, which ones you disagree with, or even put your own list below. Drop a like, and here we go. As promised, COD 4. We're gonna start with the M14. Now, it's weird because it was the highest damage per bullet assault rifle in COD 4, but that does not mean that it was good. It's actually quite the opposite, really. The M14 was a semi-automatic rifle, had very high damage, like I said, almost always killing in two shots, and with a super uh, high fire rate cap, it's easy to spam people out. So, why would it be the worst assault rifle in this game? Well, the M14 had some of the worst iron sights and recoil in COD history. So hitting shots consistently, well, it wasn't easy. It also didn't help that since it was a semi-automatic, you had to be super precise and you couldn't just spray people out like you could with the M16, the MP5, the RPD, or all the other automatics that dominated COD 4's multiplayer. But perhaps the worst part about this gun was the fact that it was completely outclassed by the other semi-auto assault rifle, the G3. The G3 was unlocked earlier, also killed in two shots, had much better iron sights, and had dramatically lower recoil. If you wanted to use a semi-auto rifle in COD 4, there was literally no reason to take the M14 over the G3, and it was hands down one of the least used guns in the game. Now we've come to World at War, we're actually going to be skipping World at War because the game actually only had one assault rifle. Did you guys know that? One assault rifle. The STG-44 is the one and only assault rifle in World at War. And the rest are either normal rifles or light machine guns. So I guess you could say the STG-44 was the worst and the best in World at War. It's actually the best. It's actually one of the best guns in the entire game. But there's really not much to talk about here. So we're going to move on to Modern Warfare 2. And yes, you may think that I have a smile on my face right now. You're right. The F-2000 in Modern Warfare 2, I love talking crap about this gun. Now, the F-2000 was unlocked at level 60. Still, one of the most controversial guns in COD history because it seems that in 2020, more than 10 years after the release of MW2, we still can't get a definitive answer on whether or not the gun sucked. It fired the fastest out of all assault rifles, but it also had some of the lowest damage. It hit for as low as 20, making it a five-shot kill without stopping power, and sure, the fire right made up for it, but you also had to factor in the obstructive iron sights, the powerful recoil, the reload time was slow, the ammo consumption was a problem, it was just a really tough gun to make work in your favor. Sure, you could get work done with this gun, but you could get work done with every gun in Modern Warfare 2, so I'm not going to let this gun off the hook, I'm not going to give it a pass. I think the F-2000 was the worst assault rifle in MW2, and I know there's going to be a fan club in the comments, but I'm not changing my mind. Now we arrive at Black Ops, the original Black Ops. The FN Foul. This is one of those guns that has appeared plenty of times in COD, but it's extremely hit or miss. It's either really, really good or really, really bad. And unfortunately, the B01 Foul was on the bad side. It wasn't awful, but it certainly wasn't a popular choice. It was unlocked at level 32, and it was the second semi auto you got your hands on. But the damage on the Foul was noticeably inferior to the M14, and both guns had the same fire rate cap. So the Foul's time to kill was just worse than the M14. And I know. 
The M14 probably kicked a little more, but neither gun really had horrible recoil. The M14's recoil was more vertical, while the foul was a bit more bouncy. So if you were looking to use a semi-automatic rifle in Black Ops 1, you would probably take the M14. The foul was just the little brother that everybody forgot about. I will say though, the Black Ops 1 foul had some of the best firing sounds in COD history. It actually sounded really good. Black Ops 1 didn't get enough credit for its sound design. Modern Warfare 3, I hate to do this, the M16A4. Now the M16 has appeared in all three Modern Warfare games and I think everybody will agree that the MW3 version is the worst. In fact, I don't think people really remember just how bad this version was, so I'm gonna help you out. The Modern Warfare 3 M16 was unlocked at level four. Just like the other two games, it was a three round burst with a very high damage potential. It could deal up to 50 damage per bullet at close range, meaning it could be a two shot kill at point blank range. However, that damage would quickly drop all the way down to 25, making it a four shot kill, two bursts, in the burst delay, it was painfully long. Now the burst of the M16 would come out at 900 rounds per minute, but there was this long delay before you could fire another burst and the overall fire rate was a pitifully slow 452 rounds per minute. Made it one of the slowest burst ARs in COD history and you had to be extremely consistent with this rifle, rifle or else you would just have a bad time. And then to add insult to injury, the M16 was outclassed in every other way, including the other burst rifle, the Type 95. It fired faster, hit harder. So once you unlocked it, why would you ever use the M16 again? Well, guess what? You wouldn't. Black Ops 2, the SMR. This gun is absolutely pointless. That's really the best way that I can describe it. Semi-automatic rifle, unlocked at 46 after you unlocked the infamous FAL OSW, and it was literally just a worse version of the FAL. It had a fire rate cap of 500 rounds per minute. It would deal about 49 to 59 damage, but the foul, on the other hand, fire rate cap 625, hit for 40 and 55. They were both two to three shot kills, but one fired much faster. So which one would you pick? The SMR was a worse version of the foul, and even on its own, it wasn't very good. It was an awkward gun. It had some weird timing, and that low cap, it just made it a pain to use. And the reload animation, I'll give it that. It was good. But other than that, it was an inferior weapon. Call of Duty Ghosts, the SC-2010. Does anybody remember this gun? You probably don't. It's one of the most underwhelming guns I think we've ever received in Call of Duty. It's one of the default assault rifles in Ghost, and it had some of the lowest damage of any automatic weapon in the game. Respectable fire rate, 750 rounds per minute. Not respectable damage, 20 to 35. It was a three to five shot kill and it was an eternity in Ghost. Ghost was known for its extreme quick time to kill and there were a ton of automatic guns in the game that would kill in two to three shots. But then along comes this gun that you kill in five shots. And it didn't take long for the community to completely forget it was even in the game. I would say the recoil pattern was okay. It was actually pretty nice because there was hardly any recoil. And the range, it was pretty forgiving even if the damage was low. But if you're looking for a good AR in Ghost, the SC-2010 2010 was probably the bottom of the list. Now we've arrived at Advanced Warfare. We have another M16 on here and it pains me to put M16s on negative lists, but here we go. It was a joke. People bash it to this day. It was added a little ways into AW as a DLC gun and quickly, I mean, people quickly trashed it. Not only was the damage extremely low and the burst was awkwardly slow, but the iron sights and the handling speeds were bad. I mean, the range was pitiful. The fire sound was weak. It was just all bad. They screwed up an iconic gun. I don't know what Sledgehammer was doing, bringing back such a weapon and just trashing it like this, but they did. The Advanced Warfare M16 was the worst assault rifle in the game. It may have been one of the worst guns on this entire list. Black Ops 3, the LV-8 Basilisk. Now, the LV-8 definitely had a community talking about it when it was added. That was December 2016. Treyarch added two new guns, an assault rifle and an SMG. Both guns, super fast firing, but had this weird quality where you had to charge them up when you pulled the trigger. There was a little delay before the bullets started coming out. That being said, it should have been pretty obvious why I don't think very highly of the LV-8. This thing fired rapidly. It was nice, but that delay when you pulled the trigger got you killed more times than you probably wanted to admit. The damage, it was rather low. It hit for 22 to 30 damage, making it a four to five shot kill. Also, since it had that fire delay, it was impossible to tap fire for improved accuracy or get tags on people from range like a lot of COD players do with, with assault rifles. You pretty much had to rush in with this thing and dump the whole mag in one go. Otherwise, you'll have to deal with that fire delay every time you take your finger off the trigger. It just it wasn't good. Infinite Warfare, the Volk. Such a cool gun in practice, but it really wasn't very good. It's a futuristic AK-47, last assault rifle you unlocked in IW, and it carried a lot of the same traits you'd expect from an AK. High damage, low fire rate, high recoil, you guys know the drill. Unfortunately, 
In practice, the Volk was terrible. It was a really fast-paced game, so slow-firing weapons were already at a disadvantage, and the recoil was very unpredictable, so you couldn't really make up for the slow shooting with good aim. It was a monster in hardcore, but I mean, so is every other gun, so I'm not really going to give it a pass there. In core, it would kill in three to four shots, and when you're only firing at 483 rounds per minute and everybody has jetpacks, those are not the stats that you want. Call of Duty World War II, the AS-44. Honestly, all the assault rifles in COD World War II were decent. They had their own role, some were definitely better, some were just flat out bad. So I would say the AS-44 was the worst. I'm not saying it was, I, I'm not saying it was a bad weapon, but rather just because it was the least impressive in comparison to everything else. It was added to COD World War II in the Shadow War update, and it looks like a precursor to an iconic AK-47. Fired at rather measly 483 rounds per minute, it would kill to three to five shots. It was inconsistent to say the least, but it is what it is. Recoil was a little bouncy, hard to control, making the shots a little bit of a pain. It was good in hardcore, like I said, everything is. Had some clear sights on it, but it just struggled. It was a viable weapon, but I think it was the worst of the ARs. Now we've reached Black Ops 4. The SWAT RFT, the first DLC weapon to be added to BO4, and I think people were expecting more. Automatic rifle, featured very low recoil and a modest fire rate. That's good, but to make up for it, it had very low damage, which made it frustrating. It was a hit marker machine. Black Ops 4 was already home to a low recoil, fast firing assault rifle, like the ICR, the Maddox, and the Vapor. So why would you use this thing? It was just a weird weapon. It handled kind of sluggishly, and the low damage largely overshadowed the solid fire rate and the low recoil. There, there's really not much else to say. In a game with a lot of memorable weapons, the SWAT RFT, was probably the least memorable. And we have arrived at Modern Warfare. Now I've gone back and forth on videos like this about which assault rifle I think is the worst in Modern Warfare. Sometimes I'll say the Fowl, sometimes I'll say the Odin, but now looking after season two's update, I say the Odin. I do. They're both two to three shot kill assault rifles, but the Odin handles and fires much slower. And it's a fully automatic gun as opposed to a semi-auto, but it's more restrictive. It handles more like an LMG than an assault rifle, and it's extremely difficult to make it work in your favor. Now, the recoil, the handling speeds are the main things that pushed me over the cliff with this. And the slow fire rate, well, that was just icing on the cake. It's always weird talking about weapon balance in modern shooters because you never know when a patch is going to hit, and this video is going to be totally irrelevant. Recorded February 2020, okay? But I would say the Odin is the worst assault rifle in Modern Warfare. And there you have it. It's a very hard list to do. If you guys want to do the same list, let me know in the comment section or on Twitter. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Drop a like, and I'll see you soon.